If you have solid aerial mechanics but struggle to find or create good opportunities to use them, chances are you haven't spent enough time on your wall-to-air setup. In order to successfully perform something like an air dribble, where you make contact on the ball and how hard determines nearly 75% of the shot's outcome. Ensuring that you make contact that's both in line towards the goal and at a speed you can comfortably control are the two easiest ways to do this. While these basic tips will carry you well into your journey of mastering wall-to-air mechanics, they aren't enough to truly cover the full spectrum of what's possible or ideal for each situation. So, whether you're new to these mechanics or looking for ways to improve, grab this training pack code in the description and let's get to work. Learning how to play the ball off the wall and into the air isn't about executing high-level mechanics and hitting clips. As fun as they are to learn and pull off, the true reason is maintaining ball possession and controlling the play. So that's where we're going to start. Each shot in this training pack is designed to not only train various types of wall-to-air setups, but to also provide you with a few situations and where you'll have to do more than just drive up the wall and hit the ball. A quick PSA for my Bacchus mod users, I got several comments in my directional air roll video claiming the training pack was different than what I showed. To fix this, you'll want to be sure that you're turning off custom training variants in the training tab. While you're here, if you'd like to follow along with my boost meter tips, you can set the boost slider from negative 1 to 100 so that now you're using limited boost. I highly encourage this as boost management is often undertrained and shouldn't be ignored. Starting with shot 1 is your classic walled air dribble setup, designed to roll halfway up the wall which allows us enough time and plenty of space to get underneath it and pop it out into the air. This shot in particular is great for training because it allows you to train not only different types of aerial shots, but can help you to gain a greater understanding of wall-to-air setups at both different speeds and points of contact. For now, let's go back to those basic tips I mentioned earlier and learn how you can apply those to this setup. In order to ensure a good setup, it's often suggested that your first step is to try and match the speed of the ball as it rolls to the wall. Starting out, this is certainly a good guideline, but not necessarily a rule you'll need to stick to as we get deeper into this training. A brief explanation behind this guiding principle is that if you and the ball are traveling the same speed, then as it begins to lose its vertical momentum, you'll be close enough to make your first touch. This moment of contact is ideal since hitting a ball that's moving away from us creates more of a redirecting touch rather than popping it out from the wall. As far as getting the ball in the air, this seems fairly straightforward. You drive up the wall behind the ball, hit it with your car, and boom, you're done. Eh, mostly. While making contact with the ball itself isn't difficult, what tends to be more challenging is making intentional contact. Meaning, there is a preferred point of contact, especially when starting out learning these setups. Ideally, you want to hit the ball in the center with the centermost part of the car's nose. When you hit the ball square, it's going to deflect opposite of the point of contact in line with your current momentum. On the other hand, hitting the ball with the corner of the car's hitbox creates more of a deflection and results in a more difficult follow-up. Now that you know how to hit the ball, we need to work on aiming it. We want our touch to launch the ball off the wall as directly towards the goal as possible. Since transitioning to the wall can skew our camera and perspective a bit, I found it simpler to rely on visual references as much as you can. The moment you should be aiming for is when the goal is fully obstructed from view by the ball. When the ball is in the air, we're now ready to follow it up. As I mentioned, matching the speed of the ball up the wall is the easiest way to help ensure that you're on pace to make a controlled touch. I also mentioned that you won't always need to follow this rule as your speed only truly matters at the point of impact. For a basic aerial setup like this one, I like to gauge my speed through my boost usage. I typically aim to use between 20 to 30 boosts getting to the wall from the start. This way, I have at least 70 boosts to work with once I'm in the air. That said, you can use little to no boost on your approach if you're aware of how to best pop the ball out into the air. Getting the ball successfully out from the wall has one key component, how close the ball is to the wall. If the ball rolled from the ground to the wall, it's most likely still in contact with the ball or close to it. This means by virtue of the car's position on the wall, just like if you were to hit this from the ground, our center of mass is below the ball's center of mass and thus will direct the ball's trajectory perpendicular away from us. Just like the ground, we can propel the ball both higher and further away from us by simply timing our jump in relation to our moment of contact. Jumping just before our hit will send the ball higher up, and jumping after will send the ball further out. When starting out learning these mechanics, we're conditioned to either emulate what we see in highlight reels or stick to the idea of making solid contact in order to attempt an aerial play. Rather, I suggest learning how to approach this and many of these other setups as slowly as possible. I'll be providing shots and examples on how to create space and time to pull off and practice these situations in game, but for now, taking your time with these setups will help develop both your accuracy and your consistency providing a solid foundation for you to build up your speed as you progress. To start, I recommend getting up to a moderate speed, hitting the ball, and observing how far away the ball goes. This is important because as we start trying to take off from the wall, we'll need to judge the distance against the distance our car is going to travel through the air after we jump. 
This first jump distance becomes more significant at closing that gap between you and the ball the softer your initial touch is. Granted, this type of setup execution doesn't allow for much of an aerial adjustment period, but since the ball isn't that far from us, we only need to ensure that we're jumping towards the ball and rolling the car 90 degrees with air roll. This way we can stay close behind the ball and can easily maintain possession and control. These next two shots are set up just like shot 1, only shot 2 is higher and shot 3 is much lower. Like we discussed with timing our jumps to be done either before or after our touch, these shots work best specifically using one or the other. When the ball is higher up, we really want to take our time here. We want to be mindful of how far away from the wall the ball may have traveled. The further up the wall the ball travels, the further out it will be when it comes back down. This means we have to jump in order to get a controlling touch, especially in an effort to avoid banging it off the ceiling. As for balls that are low on the wall, controlling our speed becomes less of a concern but rather our timing. In order for the ball to smoothly come out from the wall in a way that you can jump out after it, both you and the ball need to be parallel to the wall at the moment of contact. Like we explained with the transfer of mass, hitting the ball low on the wall like this means that we're hitting it towards the wall which can cause the ball to bounce out rather than roll up, which can be a viable setup, but we aren't quite there yet. For shot 4, we'll be using the corner from a defensive position in our setup. These types of setups tend to be a lot trickier since we need to make more of a horizontal touch rather than a vertical one. Up to this point, our point of contact with the car has been with the center of the nose. For a sideways touch, however, we want our touch to mimic that of more of a bounce dribble, sort of like chipping it with the side of the car on the underneath side of the ball. Now let's suppose you're going after a ball that doesn't roll flat and is now out from the wall. Let's use shot 5 to demonstrate how best to deal with these situations. Since we need to jump out after the ball, our biggest point of focus will need to be our speed. Naturally, hitting this ball quickly is going to boom it downfield, so how do we avoid this and keep it close? Here's where matching the ball's speed really becomes crucial. We want our touch on the ball to be controlled by meeting the ball in the air, matching the ball's rate of lift with our car from our jump. From there, we can make our touch and begin to apply boost to carry it towards the goal. Finally, I want to spend a minute learning how to create wall-to-air setups. Shots 5 through 10 are going to require you collecting and controlling the ball up the wall yourself, whether that's making a catch from midfield, converting a save into possession, or transferring a ground dribble into an aerial play. Each of these require various different techniques, some of which I've covered in previous videos and others I plan to cover soon. Take note of some of the examples here if you're looking for alternative ways to train. I can't stress enough how imperative this single technique is to learning and mastering mechanics off the wall. Just like everything else, we want to learn at a slow pace before we become comfortable at a faster one. The difference is we aren't learning this way so that we can eventually do it faster, but rather understand that these setups and techniques will actually become the lion's share of your wall-to-air setups, especially from defensive clear positions. The most critical mistake is believing that high-level play means high pace. That isn't to say you don't need to learn to be fast, but it's important to be able to recognize when slowing down the play isn't just viable, but necessary for success. I truly hope this pack can help you practice your setups and controlling touches. Apologies if you were hoping for how to do flip resets or air dribbles. The truth is, none of those mechanics mean dick if you can't learn to control the ball into an opportunity to use them. That said, we will have some more follow-up videos discussing advanced aerial mechanics like pre-flips and flip resets, but that's for another time. I hope you'll subscribe and come back when that's uploaded, but for now, get out there and work on that wall control.